Today's another beautiful, amazing day. You know why? Because I got another box in the mail from LensRentals.com, and you know what's inside? It's a GH5S. And we are gonna compare the GH5S with the A7S Mark II. These guys are awesome, smile. Now you may be asking yourself, why would I compare these cameras right now? Why, why? Because Sony, this A7S has been out since 2010. Kidding, but it feels like it, right? This has come out just a little bit ago, but still, listen, a lot of us are in a situation where we're thinking, oh, geez, what do I need to do? Because these are pretty comparable cameras now, and we're trying to make a decision, do I get this or do I get this? Because we thought this was gonna come out with a new camera, so now I really, truly have to make a decision. They didn't announce it at this last photo kina, so what do I do? And that's why I'm doing this review right now, because I'm sitting in the same situation right now. All right, so my first opinion, if I just got it out right now, I'm touching it. It's first thing, when you feel a camera, when you come from another camera, it's kind of like when you're buying new shoes. You ever buy new shoes and you always go to that one pair of shoes and you put on the new pair of shoes, but your wife or girlfriend's like, hey, there's the good on you, but you still don't feel comfortable in it? That's how I immediately feel with this. I'm gonna be honest, I just don't, I don't, I don't feel comfy. I don't, I don't, I almost dropped it. Don't tell LensRentals.com that I almost dropped it. Speaking of LensRentals.com, that's where I got these cameras, and when you want to try out new cameras, you got to go to LensRentals.com, and while you're in there, make sure you use my coupon code, save yourself 15%, make sure you rent the camera before you buy, don't commit too early, these things aren't cheap, unless you're rich, then do what you want. Back to it, immediately I feel a difference in this size, okay? If you're a Sony guy, or gal, like myself, well I'm not a gal, I'm a guy, I'm a... You know what I mean? I immediately feel the difference in size. Now I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, I have a good idea why the size is different, especially on the right hand side of the grip. I'm gonna tell you. It's probably because of this massive, amazing battery within the GH5S. This thing is massive, it's huge. Do we need to do a battery test to show that this thing lasts longer than the Sony A7S Mark II? Probably not, because we all know that the battery in this camera is horrible. Hopefully when Sony updates, they of course put the bigger battery that's in the A9 and other cameras they're coming out with now. But as of right now, Let's not compare, we know that this bad boy, here let me show you, hang on, you don't believe me. Look at this thing, it's freaking massive, it's huge. Let's turn a side view, that's a, that's a side view. But this thing is just huge in comparison to the Sony battery, it almost feels like there's two of them. Is there two of them? No. But it's bigger, right? Bigger means longer. Back to ergonomics. So if you like the feel of cameras, you know when I moved over to Sony, and I moved over to Sony with my audio as well, and I moved over to Sony with, um, I have a Sony bed now, and I have a Sony car, and I, no I don't. When I moved over to Sony, I immediately realized the difference in quality. There's a huge difference when you feel this thing. It's kind of like when you, uh, I don't know, when you grip an iPhone to a crappy phone. You, you immediately can tell the difference when you touch it. Wow. Quality, it just screams quality. You feel like it's solid. It is solid as a rock. When I feel this, I don't get the same feeling. I don't, I don't get the same feeling. I get a very Canon T6i or 7i or 17i or whatever's out right now kind of feeling. I know the quality isn't of that quality, but I'll tell you the feeling isn't there of a more professional camera. Now the one thing that I do like about the feeling of this is something that you know Canon did a good job and Sony does a freaking horrible job at is how they paint them. And I can already tell with this kind of paint, I feel that this is gonna last longer. Sony has a smooth paint, which is beautiful when you get out of the box. Five seconds later, it's horrific because that paint scratches off. With this, it has a little kind of like bubbly kind of stuff on it. It reminds me of like a Canon where it's just gonna be a little bit more durable in terms of paint. A lot of this thing is also plastic and rubber and that also helps with paint not falling off because there is no paint, it's plastic and rubber. Feeling wise, you know, I'd say Sony's still ahead on that, but does feeling really matter when you're filming, when somebody's paying you? Mine sometimes do. But in this case, no, we're gonna go ahead with not feelings and let's go with specs. I would go ahead and say the same thing about the lenses. I got a handful of lenses, actually I think I've ordered more by accident, but who cares? They don't feel the same. You know, when we came from Canon, and you probably came from Canon too, the L lenses, I mean, you know, they, they were some of my favorites. They feel amazing. This doesn't feel like that. Sony's feel more like that, but again, they scratch everywhere. I don't know if you can see how horrible. I actually have, this is my ugly A7S Mark II because I want you to see the truth of how these things kind of wear and tear. There's a broken screen right there. That happened in Veil, so it's acceptable. I ripped that off. There are scratches all over here on the corners. Probably can't see that from that far. Now, one last thing on ergonomics. Now, ergonomics really that important. I don't know, if you like hating your life, they are. Wait, did that make sense? I don't know if that made sense, but what I mean by that is, look, Sony, record button on the side. Awkward, right in the corner. They did something that nobody else has ever done before. They put it in the dumbest place ever. Yes, this is horrific. How many times have I hit that and I thought I hit it, but I really didn't hit it? It's kind of really flush. 
and I'm thinking I'm hitting the record button because that's all I do with this A7S Mark II is I record. And I can't tell you a worse thing when you're on a shoot, you think you hit the record button, but you really didn't hit the record button because there's this freaking flush and you don't even know and silly. Ergonomics in terms of buttons, not so good. Everything else kind of matches up ergonomically, but of course, they put the record button where a record button should be more likely at, which is right there, and it's big, and I can feel it. It's not flush. It sticks out just a little bit, but it's big, and it says, Rick, which means record. So I am liking that a lot more compared with the Sony. The last thing I'm gonna talk about ergonomically that I'm seeing right now, right off the bat, is the GH5S has a 4K recording knob here, so there's no need to go through the menu. Apparently, you could just go ahead and 4 Okay, I really thoroughly enjoy that. Don't have to go through menus. You just do boop, 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 4K. I don't think it makes that noise, but that's easier, right? So that, you know, they truly are building something because we know this is for filming, right? And this is for filming as well, but they truly have built this for filming instead of just saying it's built for filming. They actually made it for filming. Me likey mucho. Okay, something I talked about a handful of times that Sony lacks in a lot is flip screen. Right now, I am filming on another A7S Mark II, and you know what? I have no idea if the camera is still on or if I'm in focus or if the sun's coming up right now. It's shortly after seven or six in the morning. Now I need to adjust things so it's not so blown out. I have no idea. Maybe my audio stopped recording. I still can't tell because I can't see the screen. I'm gonna have to get up. Let me get up real quick and check on that. Give me a second. Okay, uh, might be a little bright, but I'm not too worried about it because it's a YouTube video, who cares? Also another thing with the screen, of course, they have a touch screen, which, oh geez, what did I do? Help, help. Back. You know, not a real big thing with me. You know, I, touch screen's fantastic. Kind of like a prosumer kind of thing, but you know, it's also kind of thing by now. You know, this is not 1996 anymore. It is 2000, what's 2008? 2018. And you know, why not have touch screen? It probably costs another four cents, Sony. I mean, you probably invented touch screen. Can you not put it in your cameras? I think you should. On to other things I really don't care about. The GH5S has the ability to have two memory cards because you're very disorganized and you need two. I mean, with 128 gigabyte cards out there, super super cheap these days. What the heck do you need two slots for? I mean, if you're really filming and you're doing it for real, I mean, you should be swapping out cards anyways on a regular basis and downloading your footage to make sure everything is a-okay. You have two cards in there, I don't know. Maybe it's good. I mean, I, I've been on a lot of trips where I've gone like overseas, I'm filming in like Peru or somewhere like that where you're in the jungle and shoot to switch out a card. It's raining, you don't want to. It might be good, I guess. I just don't think it's something that's like on my top list of things that I need, but it does it where Sony does not. Now something that's becoming more and more and more and more and more important, 4K. My company makes about 100 videos a year and out of all those videos, we export out into 4K zero times a year. Why is that? Well, most of our clients are finally getting updated with 1080p, that's the truth. So if I say that's the truth, was everything else a lie? However, things are changing. And let me give a good example. This weekend, I have a shoot with a company called Chev V. Can I say that? I think I can. A company that makes cars. But I already said it, Chev So yes, Chevrolet. So I have a shoot this weekend. And you know what they asked me last time? is said, hey, can we get that on 4K? And I said, ha, ha, uh, yeah. Now, both cameras do shoot 4K. However, you know, when you're doing one of those shoots where it's super action, you know, it's really nice sometimes to shoot things in. 4K, 60 frames a second. However, this can't do that. This can. 4K, 60 frames a second is a big deal for me. It is something that is extremely important. 99.99% of what I shoot, or maybe 97.99% of what I shoot is in 60 frames a second at 1080 because that's all this can do. That is a big deal for me. 4K, 60 frames a second is a necessity these days for me. More and more clients are gonna be asking for 4K and to have that a bit capability to be able to film 4K in 60 frames a second is something I desperately need. Dear Sony, hope you're listening. Next thing I wanna talk about is the size of this massive sensor. Look at that little cute baby little thing in there. Isn't it cute? Well, does it matter? Look at Sony's swinging big there. Watch some other tutorials of people a lot smarter than me, but what I do know is that larger sensor size, especially in the Sony, is gonna mean this camera can go up a lot higher in ISO when it comes to low light. And what is most important to me, if you know me or if you don't know me, then I'll tell you right now, low light is probably the most important thing to me in a camera. Last thing I'm gonna talk about right now is the footage capabilities. We already talked about the 4K capabilities and this whoops Sony's butt on that. The question is, does it whoop it everywhere else? The answer is yes, it, it, it does. Number wise, this thing kicks Sony's butt when it comes to to footage, and what I mean by footage, the 4K, 60 frames a second, yes, no. Yes, I know the answer is yes, but we're still gonna take a look at it. Both of the cameras have like a B-log, like a film flat for all those people who love color grading, and both cameras film at 400 megabytes a second. I am kidding, they don't. This camera films at 400 megabytes a second, and that's the other thing that is just killing me that Sony hasn't come out with yet. They don't have a camera they can film with some heftier footage, something you can push to the limits. Not quite raw, but let's get as close as we can before we have to buy like a red or something else. In these small format cameras, that is something that is 
is coming out, and Sony, if you do not catch up, I will leave you, and I am serious. The Sony has 100 megabytes per second, so yes, is that good? Uh, two years ago, it was fantastic, and wow, 100 megabytes per second, but you know what? It is mm, 2018, Sony. So we've come down to the end. What do I think? What would I buy? You know what? The thing is, I already have a handful of these things, and you know, this thing is so better in so many ways, you know, but do you make that switch? Do you make the switch in buying all those lenses? Do you make the switch? Uh, you know, I doubt there's a whole bunch of people like me that are already on a full frame Sony camera. And you might be, but you know, full frame going to this, you know, it's kind of hard to really bite down on going back to a crop sensor, switching all of your lenses again. Do you really want to do that? For me, the answer is probably no. But for the people out there that don't have this, if they have a, you know, like a 6300 and a 6500 or maybe less, and they want to move up to the next camera and they get a little more serious, they want to make some money with these cameras, what would I do? If I could read the future, it'd be a lot better to answer that. I, I could answer that a lot better, trust me. But I can't read the future. I would buy both. I'm kidding, who can do that? If I was gonna recommend one of these cameras, it'd probably be neither. Yes, I said neither. A7 Mark III is the thing I would buy. Yes, why is that? Well, what we do know, the direction that Sony has been going for the last five years, and they've been killing it. Do they promise a new camera? And they just said here, most recently in an interview, they said that, hey, we are holding out on the A7S Mark III because we're gonna bring you something that is amazing. So if I had to buy a camera right now, it would be the A7 Mark III if it were up to me. Again, you can start investing in full frame Sony lenses. It's a fantastic camera. It goes up to about 6,400 before you should probably stop using it in the dark, just like this guy. Does it even compare with the specs on this? No, it doesn't. Does it compare with the specs on this? No, but it does do some things better, like 120 frames a second, does better than the A7S Mark II. But if you're going to invest, Sony's been heading the right direction for a long time, and I know they're making us wait for a reason. Hey, this is a message from Future Grind. If you wanna see that footage, the comparison between the GH5S and the A7S Mark II, comment below. Let me know because, hey, I ran out of time on this vlog. I wasn't planning on showing it at all, but I'm telling you, that GH5 is killer. If you wanna see it again, comment below. Back to past Brian. Or wait, younger Brian. The last thing I'm gonna recommend for you is not to trust me, but to verify me. And how you can do that, you can go to lensrentals.com and rent this camera for yourself and try it out and see if you like it. Rent them both, get the GH5S, get the Sony A7 III, compare them, say, hey, could I deal with this? You know, what added benefits does it give me? It's a more affordable camera, it is. And on there, just make sure to use my coupon code, save yourself 15%, and you will find out, yes, is the A7 Mark III a more affordable camera? Is it as good as this? It's almost there, I would say, but the thing is, is you wanna invest in the company that you're gonna be with for a long time. Hopefully this review was helpful for you. I know even talking these things out was helpful for me. It was kind of therapy for me, but hope you guys have an amazing day. Make sure you like and subscribe, even if you like the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.